to bring in Ron Butler. He's a mortgage broker at uh, Butler Mortgage. And Ron, you have been very uh, vocal about the situation in Canada's housing market and Toronto's housing market. Uh, and I think you've used the word crisis to describe where we're at. Yeah, I think it's a fair way to describe it. Uh, looking back last week, I attended an Empire Club presentation. Tim Hudak was there talking about the fact that even though we're in desperate need of new builds, we actually fell in terms of new builds in Canada in 2022 from the peak in 2021. And also it would appear that we will have even fewer new completions this year than we did in 2022. Now that's on top of a record immigration level in 2022 of a million pe new Canadians, a million people coming to Canada. That's the math just screams supply issue. I mean, yes, it's economics 101, but I'm glad you brought in the immigration issue because it does seem disconnected from that supply picture. As you mentioned, we have got, uh, you know, federal political jockeying that's going pl going on in Ontario. There's also a rising political chatter, and then you have this municipal election. At any level of government, have you seen convincing arguments, policies coming from any political spectrum at all? No, in reality, we've only seen theater. There's been proposals, there's been suggestions, there's been policy changes, but ultimately, if there's no additional backhoes in the ground, if there's no new supply delivered on an increased basis, and it, again, it would appear that in 2023, it will be lower than 2022. And most interestingly, in this last quarter, uh, the federal government has indicated that it thinks that the level of immigration in the first quarter of 2023 actually slightly exceeded the record year of 2022. So unless you can point to actual backhoes in the ground, actual product going up for people to live in, all of these policy discussions, all of the federal government's um, incremental touches to do with savings for down payments or joint equity, all of which are yielding very little, if any, results. If we don't actually start to build in the face of possibly another record year of immigration, it's just going to get worse and worse. Um, there's a Mike Moffat, who's an IV prof, kind of underlined your point that even by the CMHC's own counts to get to affordable housing, you need something like 6 million new homes built in the next nine years. In the last 30 years, only 4 million homes have been completed. So we need to build more homes in the next nine years than we have built in the last 30 years combined. Oh, and on a per capita basis, on a per capita basis, we greatly lag the home build in the 1970s and early 1980s. So even though we had a record year of actual completions in 2021, it was almost 50% lower than the per capita homes we developed in the 70s and early 80s. So there is a systemic problem here. Uh, Mike's data is great. You know, there was one point he came out with that if you look at the municipality of Mississauga, in terms of what its targets should have been for new builds it, over the last 10 years, it was behind 600% versus what the expansion should have been to accommodate the growth of the region. You know, the bluntest tool that we seem to have right now and the most effective, though, is interest rates. You've seen that at play. Uh, buyers retrench when rates are going up and then any little hint of stability, obviously they came out in full force. You're a mortgage broker. Your job is to get people mortgages right now, help them finance the homes that they want. Can you take us into the psychology that you're seeing of people looking for homes right now? How significant was that pause in fueling demand? Well, what, we, what, what happened with the pause is the incentive for the Canadian bond market to produce lower bond yields, which dropped fixed rate mortgages, which is all that is being sought out today. There's virtually no new variable rate mortgage that's ever being instituted today. It's all fixed rates. It's almost all short term, two year and three year rates. And those rates came down significantly 
in the month of March, in late February, in the month of March, almost 60 basis points, said in some cases, a few at close to three quarters of a percent reduction uh, in very specific product lines. And yeah, the market took off because the sensitivity to interest rates that you just mentioned is very, very real. Market took off, we saw the growth in prices, uh, just an incredible growth in prices you indicated on a month by month basis. And also uh, the sales, which were so slow in 2022, unit sales, uh, picked right up, um, not still not nearly past 10 year lows, but still radical increase in sales. So that's how quickly consumers react to better mortgage rates. Now, in the last three weeks, two and a half weeks, we have seen fixed rates creep back up 50 basis points because obviously cuts are much farther away. Uh, the Bank of Canada may actually be contemplating a small increase next week. Well, that was going to be my next question. Would another rate hike put an end to all this? Oh, another rate hike on the 7th would uh, be just uh, devastating for the market. It would push out any reduction in fixed rates uh, right into Q1 or Q2 of next year. And it realistically, um, it would it would scare people. It would it would radically change buyer sentiment. Uh, it may not happen. Uh, obviously, there, there may be no increase uh, next week, but certainly it is a enormous impact on buyer sentiment in terms of mortgage rates. All right.